Hi everyone, my name is Beth. I'm a librarian at the Weinberg Library in Mequon. And today I'm here to talk to you about a resource that is known by a few different names. You may know it as Overdrive, the Wisconsin Digital Library, or Libby. As always, there is a handout for this presentation. In fact, there are two different handouts. One is for how to use the Wisconsin Digital Library on your Kindle, and one is how to use Libby, the app, on your smartphone or other smart device. Um, those are linked in the description below, so please feel free to take a look at them. This resource that I have pulled up here, the Wisconsin Digital Library, is a resource through which you can access ebooks, so digital books that you could read on a computer, on a Kindle, or on a smart device like a smartphone, audiobooks that you could access through the Libby app, which is accessible on a smartphone or another smart device, and digital magazines, which you can get to on the computer or through Libby. Now I just used several different terms to refer to the same thing, so let me make clear. Overdrive is the Wisconsin Digital Library is Libby. They all tap into the same system, they all pull from the same company, they all use the same software. Um, they just have different names because we like to confuse you and make your life difficult. <laughs> I would prefer personally that they all be called the same thing, but they're not. Um, so. Overdrive is the Wisconsin Digital Library, is Libby. Anytime you hear any of those phrases, we are talking about the exact same things. So this particular resource is something that every library in the, in the state of Wisconsin subscribes to. We are limited in the number of licenses that we can purchase from the publisher. Um, so publishers have decided that it's not as simple as saying, well, it's a digital book, so if we buy one, everyone can access it, right? They still want to get their money's worth. So when we buy a license for an ebook, it means that only one person can read it at a time. So what we do is we buy a certain number of licenses for each item, um, whether it's an ebook, an audiobook, and then only certain numbers of people can access it at a time. Which is all to say that as you go through the Wisconsin Digital Library, Libby, Overdrive, you're often going to run into wait lists on particular items. And often those wait lists will be pretty long, unfortunately, um, because we are sharing these resources with the entire state. So keep that in mind as we move through here. When it comes to accessing ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines through the Wisconsin Digital Library, um, most folks want to access them remotely. So they want to be able to do it while they're in the car, while they're on a plane, while they're moving around in the world, rather than when they're tied down to their computer. And one of the ways that you can access these ebooks is through a Kindle. If you have a Kindle, the way that you get into the Wisconsin Digital Library and actually download ebooks is first by starting out on your computer. And what you're going to want to do is go to our website, flwlib.org, and you'll land here. From here, if you mouse over eServices at the top of the screen, on the left under eLibrary, you'll see the Wisconsin Digital Library Libby and Overdrive listed. So you can click on that. That takes you to a description of the Wisconsin Digital Library. And you can click on the link at the very top of the screen here, this Frank L. Weinberg Library, da, 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 to finally get to the Wisconsin Digital Library homepage. Then you're going to want to sign in, which you do by clicking on sign in in the top right corner. Because the Wisconsin Digital Library remembers me, it defaulted to the Monarch Library System for the library. If there isn't anything selected here, you would click on this downward arrow to open a drop down menu. You can scroll all the way down through this menu to look for the Frank L. Weinberg Library, but I would just choose the library system since it's right here near the top. Monarch Library System MLS, and then you'll put in your library card number and your PIN, which is usually the last four numbers of your phone number. And then you'll click Sign In. So now I'm signed in to my Wisconsin Digital Library account, and this is where I want to be to search for books, to check them out, and to send them to my Kindle. So to search for something specific, you will click on Search near the top of the screen here. You can type in an author's name, a title of a book, or a series. I'm going to search for James Patterson, so I'll start typing that in. And you can see that I'm getting a drop down menu of some suggestions. So I've got a title, I've got a series, and I've got a bunch of different authors that I can choose from. If I saw the author that I wanted in this list, I could go ahead and click on it to choose them. I do see James Patterson here, but just for grins, I'm going to keep typing in the name. So I'm going to say Patterson, James. 
And then if I still didn't see the name I'm looking for, I could go ahead and click on the little magnifying glass to complete the search. But I do see James Patterson here, so I'm gonna click on him. And that gets me to a list of results for the name James Patterson. You can see there are 587 results here, so that's quite a few. This is how to search for things. If you wanna browse for things instead, um, you can click on subjects near the top of the screen, and that'll show you a list of genres organized alphabetically. So we've got fiction, and then we've got nonfiction. I can click on any of these, so let's choose historical fiction, for example. And then I get taken to a screen very much like the one we just saw with a list of different items that I can choose from. Right away, I can see the cover of each of these items. I can see the title, I can see the author, and I can see what format they are. So this one is an ebook, for example. This one is an audiobook. I might also see a magazine here, depending on what I searched for. If I wanted to learn more about any of these items, I could click on the cover and get taken to an informational page about them. At a glance, I can see that a lot of these are on wait lists. So like I mentioned before, because we're limited by the publisher in how much we can circulate to you, um, a lot of these items have wait lists and you'll have to place a hold on them and then be emailed when they're ready for you. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. If you're searching in the Wisconsin Digital Library so you can download books to your Kindle, one important thing you're gonna to wanna to do after you've either completed your search or you've chosen a genre is on the left here, these are a bunch of filters that you have access to. Click on eBooks and then click on Kindle Book. And because this is the first time I've done this, the Wisconsin Digital Library is gonna ask me, oh, do you always only wanna see Kindle Books here? And if you have a Kindle and you know you only want to want to be able to download ebooks to your Kindle, I would go ahead and say set Kindle preference. That way, going forward, you'll only see books that you can access on the Kindle because not everything is available for the Kindle and you don't want to get excited about something and then realize later that you can't actually get to it, right? So now the list has been narrowed down to just what I can access on an actual Kindle device. Now, if I wanted to put one of these books on hold, let's say, for example, this first one, I could go ahead and click place a hold here. And again, because this is the first time I'm doing this, the Wisconsin Digital Library is now asking me for my email address, which I'm going to put in. And this is the address where I'll receive a notification once this book is ready for me. So now that I've got my email in here, I'll say place a hold. And I've got a confirmation here. I'm number 12 on one copy, and they're letting me know they're gonna send me an email when it is ready. Now that I've told them my email address once, they will remember it, and next time I won't have to give them my email address again. This is the address they will always send hold notifications to. And to get out of here, I'm gonna hit the X button in the top right corner. So now I have this particular book on hold. If you're just looking for something to read right now, something to download on your Kindle right this minute. You can also use the filters on the left here to narrow your results down to see just what's available right now. And to do that, under availability, you would click on available now. And now you can see all of the books that are listed have this orange available banner at the top and they say borrow instead of place a hold. I'm gonna check one out just as an example. So I'll say borrow here under the spirit of the border and it's popping up with the confirmation screen. Now it's prompting me how long would I like to borrow the book for? So by default, when you go to check out an ebook the first time, it'll check it out for 14 days to you. But if you click on this drop down menu here, it opens a menu where you can check it out for a shorter period of time or for up to 21 days. Once you've made a selection in this menu once, it will remember it going forward. So I'm gonna say 21 days here. And then once I click borrow, it'll check this book out for three weeks. And the next time I go to check something out, it will automatically save 21 days in this little drop down menu here. I'm going to go ahead and click borrow. And now I've been given a little confirmation screen here. Success. I've checked this out. It's checked out until this date and I can borrow nine more titles because you're limited to 10 at a time. If I was ready to go ahead and send this to my Kindle, if I'm all done searching, I found what I wanted, this is the book I need, I could just say read now with Kindle right from here to start the process of sending it to my Kindle. If I wanted to keep searching for things though, I could hit the X button in the top right corner 
and go back to the results and go back and look at other subjects or do a search or whatever else I needed to do. When you're ready to move an ebook onto your Kindle, or if you want to see what you have on hold, in the top right corner here, if you click on My Account, you could choose Holds from this list to see what you have on hold. From here, you can edit the email where they'll contact you to let you know that the book is ready. You can suspend the hold. So if you know you're going to be out of town or away from a computer for a long time and you don't want to risk run, losing your chance at this book, you could click suspend hold and suspend it for up to six months. And then you'll stay in the same spot on the wait list, but it won't actually check itself out to you until you, until the suspension is over. So if you wind up at the top of the list and then six months from now your suspension ends, the book will automatically land in your account. You can also click remove to remove your hold on the book and give it up to the next person in line. When this book becomes available, I'll get an email about it and then it will be automatically checked out to me for either two weeks or three weeks now that I've set that as my default checkout time. I am going to say remove because I don't actually want this book, so I'm going to say remove hold and now it's gone. And you can see here, just like with loans, you can only place 10 items on hold at a time. Now, if I'm ready to go ahead and download that book that I checked out earlier onto my Kindle, I'll click on my account and then go to loans. Here it is. So I can see that it expires in 21 days. I also have the option to return it from here. So if I don't want it after all, I can give it back. Within three days of the book being due, so in 18 days, 18 days from now, there will be another button that shows up under the book that either says renew or request again. If it says renew, then when you click on it, you'll get three more weeks with the book. If it says request again, that means that someone else is waiting for it. Um, so there's a wait list on it and you can put yourself back on the wait list, but you can't actually hold on to the book for any more time. Um, so if you're not quite done with it, it'll go to the next person and then it'll come back to you once that person is finished. If I'm ready to go ahead and download it to my Kindle, I'll just say read now with Kindle. And that's going to take me to Amazon.com where it will prompt me to actually log into my Amazon account. If you're already logged into your Amazon account on your computer, you won't see this screen. Instead, you'll see this screen. So you've got a description of the book. And then on the right over here, um, you can say get library book. Now, if you have more than one Kindle device or you, you share an Amazon account with someone else in your household who has their own Kindle, you might want to click on where it says deliver to. And just make sure that you've got the right Kindle selected. So if you've got like Bill's Kindle versus Jan's Kindle um, and you're Jan, you don't want to send it to Bill's Kindle because he doesn't want it. You do. So just kind of make sure that it's got the right thing here. And then you would say get library book. And once you've done that, you'll see a confirmation page. And then um, once you go to your Kindle, the book will show up on the front screen as soon as it finishes downloading. So you do have to have your Kindle connected to the internet, to Wi-Fi, in order to be able to download the book finally. Um, but once it's there, you're all set and you'll have it for the next 21 days. When the loan expires, you won't be able to access it anymore and it will return itself automatically from your account. So you don't have to worry about fines or anything like that. So that's how to get ebooks on your Kindle. Audiobooks are not available on Kindles um, and magazines are not available on Kindles. So you can also access audiobooks and magazines from the Wisconsin Digital Library, but you would have to do it on a computer, which is fine. Um, you follow all the same steps to get signed in and then you can search for particular magazines or audiobooks um, or browse by subject and just look underneath the title of the book to see what format it is and you'll be able to find audiobooks that way. When it comes to finding magazines specifically, obviously you can search for the title by clicking on search up here. You can also browse for magazines by clicking on subjects and then choosing magazines from this little menu bar up here. Here you can, you can choose to see all 3000 magazine titles to choose from, or you can click on a particular subject just to see magazines in that subject. So for example, if I click on travel and outdoor, I get taken to a screen that looks very much like we were seeing before with different books. Um, magazines are always available, but again, they're only available on the Wisconsin Digital Library website 
or in the Libby app, which I'm going to talk about in a second. They are not available on Kindle. Um, so you'd have to go on your computer to access them. But you can see they're always available. You can click on a cover to see more about it. You can go ahead and borrow the most recent issue. To access previous issues, so if I wanted to read the adventure catalog, I could click on the cover and I can see the most recent issue here is February 1st, 2021, and I can see the cover. I can click select another issue to access other issues. This is actually a pretty recent acquisition. They only have the January and February issues, um, but I could click on January to switch to it and then say borrow um, to access it here. And then once it's checked out to me, just like with a book, I can click on my account in the top right corner, click on loans and read it from there. Magazines are checked out for three weeks. You can renew them twice, just like a regular book. If you run out of time with it, it will return itself and you don't have to worry about any fines. So that is the Wisconsin Digital Library website. Um, again, it's useful for downloading eBooks onto a Kindle. It's also useful for listening to audiobooks or reading magazines on your computer. So now let's talk about Libby. Libby is the app that you would use to access eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines on the go, on a phone, on a tablet, on an iPad, on any sort of smart device that isn't a Kindle device. So to download the Libby app on a phone or a device, depending on your device, you're gonna to wanna to either go into the App Store on an iPhone or an iPad, or the Play Store on an Android device like a smartphone or a Samsung tablet. In the Play Store, you can search for specific apps by tapping into the search bar at the top of the screen. So I'm gonna tap on that. And then I'm gonna search for Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Libby by Overdrive is the right result, so I'll tap on that. That takes me here. On an iPhone or an iPad, you're gonna to wanna to tap Get and then Install. On an Android device like a smartphone, you'll just tap Install. I can say Open from here. To access the Libby app elsewhere, you want to look for the Libby icon, which looks like this. Um, and once you tap on it, it'll open up the Libby app and get you started. So the first time you open the Libby app, you'll be, you'll be prompted to walk through a setup process. Um, so the first question is, do you have a library card? Yes, I do. And what I would say is to say, I'll search for a library. And then you can type in the Frank L. Weinberg Library. So Frank L. And as I type that in, I can see I've got a, a matching result here. The Wisconsin Public Library Consortium, Monarch Library System, Frank L. Weinberg Library of Mequon Thienesville, and it is in Mequon, Wisconsin. So that's the one I want. So I'm gonna tap on this big pink box. And now I'm being prompted to sign in to my Wisconsin Public Library account. Um, so now tap on choose a location. And just like on the Wisconsin Digital Library website, the Monarch Library System is right near the top of the list, so I'm going to scroll down until I see it. There it is, and then I'm going to tap on it. Now it's asking for my library card number, so I can tap into that box and type it in. And then if I scroll down just a little bit, I can see the next button, which I'll press. Now it's asking for my PIN. Again, that's the last four of my phone number. And now I'll tap Sign In. Now one thing to note here, is that Libby is asking if I prefer to read with Kindle. So if you have a Kindle and a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet, you can download Libby onto your smart device and then use Libby to send things directly to your Kindle without having to go onto a computer. Um, it's totally up to you if you wanna do that. Um, if you do, you could say, yes, I read with Kindle, and then Libby will sync up with your Kindle account and we'll speak to it and send things to it. If you don't have a Kindle, or if you don't wanna use Libby with your Kindle, just say skip. So now that I've skipped the Kindle step, I've landed in the library part of the Libby app. So this is where you would go to actually search for eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines and check them out. So to search for eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines, you would tap the magnifying glass in the bottom left corner of the screen. And just like in the Wisconsin Digital Library, you can search by title, by author, or by series. So you could search for a title of a magazine, you could search for the title of a book, the author of a book, um, the series that an audiobook belongs to. Just like in the Wisconsin Digital Library, if I start typing in an author, I'll get a drop down menu of a bunch of different things that I could possibly choose from that might match. Um, so again, I've got a series, I've got some authors here. I do see James Patterson, so I could go ahead and tap on him. 
I can also keep typing the name if I don't quite see what I'm looking for. And I can do a generic search by just tapping on the magnifying glass to search for Patterson, James. But James Patterson is who I want, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on him. And then the results screen looks like this. You can scroll downward to see different books and different audiobooks and magazines that might match the search term that you used. You can also see that near the top of the screen here, Libby tells me that it's listing 296 books and 287 audiobooks. If I wanted to just see books or audiobooks, I could tap on one of these, like audiobooks, for example, and it would narrow down my results so that I can only see that particular material. You'll notice too that with audiobooks, they have this little earbud looking icon and it tells you how long the audiobook is underneath the cover. Now to place an item on hold, just like in the Wisconsin Digital Library, I would tap on place hold. It comes up and says, are you sure you want to put this on hold? If I hadn't already given the Wisconsin Digital Library my email address, they would ask me for it now. And then I could say place hold to put it on hold finally. Now it's popped up and said, um, would you like to set up notifications on your device? Notifications are just pop-ups or um, sounds that you'll hear when a particular item is available for you. So you'll get an email from Libby when it's ready and you'll see a little message pop up on your particular device that says, hey, your, your item is ready to check out or your hold has been checked out or your hold is expired. Um, if you want to make changes to how those work, you would just say manage notifications or you can say not now to skip this step. So now that I have this on hold, um, I can say play a sample. I can go and suspend the hold, which works the exact same way as in the Wisconsin Digital Library. I can put it on hold um, for up to six months. I can say keep browsing to go back and continue searching, or I can go to my shelf to go ahead and see what I have checked out and start listening to it. Now, if I want to browse for items by topic or by genre, um, I would tap on the little library card icon near the bottom of the screen here. And that is what this icon is supposed to represent. It's supposed to be your library card. And that takes you to essentially the library part of the app. So this is again, where you would go in to browse for particular items. If you wanna browse for a magazine, you would tap on available near the top of the screen here. And that takes me to this screen and just like before, near the top of the screen, Libby tells me it's listing a certain number of books, audiobooks, and magazines. Because I want to browse just by what magazines are available, I'm going to tap on magazines. And now the only things I'm going to see here are the magazines that are available in Libby, which is 3,000 of them. So I could go ahead and scroll through the full list, or I can tap refine, then tap subject, and then scroll through this list until I see a particular subject that looks interesting to me. So let's do travel and outdoor again, since that will, that's what we did in the Wisconsin Digital Library. And now if I scroll down here, I can see all of the different magazines that are available. And just like in the regular Wisconsin Digital Library website, these are all available on demand. You don't have to wait for them. There's no wait list. To see the latest issue or to see back issues, I would tap on the cover. So I'm gonna tap on the National Geographic Traveler. Here's the most recent issue. It's from May 1st, 2021. Here's the cover. I could go ahead and say borrow to check this out. Or if I wanted to see back issues, I can scroll all the way down, all the way past the description. And here are the back issues of the magazine. And I could tap on any of these to see more about them. So if I wanted to see the April issue, for example, I could tap on it. There it is. There's the cover. I can read the description and I can tap borrow to go ahead and check it out. So that's how you would browse for magazines. You go into available, narrow down by magazines, and then use the refine button to narrow down by subject. To browse for books and audiobooks, meanwhile, you would instead tap on subjects near the top of the screen, and then you would choose the subject or genre you want to pick from. So let's go back with historical fiction. And then just like before, I can narrow down by book or audiobook. Let's say I want to check out a book. And now I will only see books that are in the historical fiction section. If I just want to see what's available now, if I just want to check something out right away, I can tap refine and then tap availability. 
and then available now. Oh look, Gentleman in Moscow is here. So I'm gonna tap borrow. If I wanna change my default checkout period, I can tap on 14 days and I could choose seven, 14 or 21. And now that I've chosen 21, once I tap borrow, Libby will remember that that's the choice I made and everything, every ebook or magazine that I check out will be checked out for that amount of time. Audiobooks can only be checked out for 14 days maximum. Ebooks and magazines are 21. So now I'm gonna say borrow. So now I've checked that out. Now I can say open book to go ahead and start reading, keep browsing to go back and keep searching or go to shelf to see more options that I have with this book. Now, once you've checked out a particular book, if you are ready to go ahead and read it or listen to it, or if you're ready to go and read a magazine that you checked out, you can tap on the little icon down here that looks like a bunch of books. And this is your shelf. And you can see I have two loans and one hold. Tap on holds. And here's my hold on this James Patterson book. Um, it tells me about how much time it thinks I have to wait six weeks. I can tap on the cover to see more about the book and I can say manage hold to do things like suspend the hold again for up to six months. I can cancel the hold, which I am going to do because I don't actually want it. So I said cancel hold and now I'll say cancel hold and now it's done. It's gone. And then I can say go to shelf to go back to where I was and keep working on the things that I have on hold. Now I am looking at my hold, but if I want to go back and look at my loans, I can tap on the books again. And then I can tap on loans up here to see the books that I have checked out. So I've still got the spirit of the border checked out because again, Libby pulls from the same thing, right? These are the same resources that we're accessing. So Libby knows what you have checked out on the Wisconsin Digital Library as well as vice versa. If I wanted to see more about any of these books, I could tap on the cover. I can say manage loan to either return the book early or again within three days of the book being due to renew the loan. So I can see here that it's due on May 5th. So on May 2nd, I could come in here and potentially renew it. Again though, if someone else is waiting for it, I can't renew it right away. This would instead say request again and then it would renew the request so that I can get back on the wait list for it. One thing to notice, is that up here next to the title and the author, I have a black check mark. This means that the book has been downloaded onto my device and you can download audiobooks and magazines onto your device as well. And then you'll be able to read them offline. And when you're done reading them, if you return them manually or if they return themselves, so if you get to the end of the 21 days and the book goes back, again, there's no fine. You don't have to worry about it. And it'll delete itself automatically from your phone. So you don't have to worry about it taking up space. This black check mark means that this book is downloaded, so I'm, I'm good to go. If instead I saw this little cloud icon, that would mean that the book hasn't been downloaded yet, probably because when I checked it out for whatever reason, I wasn't connected to Wi-Fi on my phone. Um, Libby will only download things when you're on Wi-Fi because it doesn't want to use up your data. If you come to the library, you check out a book using your data, and then you get home and you see, oh, there's this little cloud icon. You can tap on the cloud and then say download to go ahead and download the book. And once this black circle fills up, the book is downloaded and now I can read it offline. Once I'm ready to read a book, I could tap on read with and I'll be prompted, where do you want to read it? Do you want to read it on a Kindle or in Libby? If you say Kindle, you'll be taken through the process of checking it out onto your Amazon Kindle device. So you'll be taken to amazon.com, you'll need to log in, and then you'll say get library book, just like you would have done in the Wisconsin Digital Library. If you're ready to read it on the device you're using though, you can just say Libby, and it will remember that going forward. Um, so now that I've chosen to read this on Libby once, if I go back, it'll say open in Libby going forward. Now I've made my choice for this particular book. I'm, I'm reading it in Libby, but if I changed my mind, if I decided that I wanted to read it on my Kindle after all, I could tap manage loan and then say read with and be taken back to that same screen. And then I could say Kindle and send it to my Kindle. Now I am gonna return this because I don't actually want it. So I'm gonna say manage loan and then return early. And if I scroll down a little bit, I'll choose return and now it's gone. And I can go back to the shelf to continue either reading this book 
or I can tap on the little library card icon to go back and browse for books, or I can search for something in the bottom of the screen. And that's it. That's the whole spiel between the Wisconsin Digital Library and Libby. Now, what I will mention also, if you go to our website and you go to the Wisconsin Digital Library page, we also have written instructions near the bottom of the screen, not just for the Libby app and for how to get ebooks on your Kindle, but also if you have a Nook or a Kobo or you have an older MP3 player, we have instructions for all four of those different formats. As always, thank you for joining me. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you back here on May 7th. We will be talking about how to get movies and music onto your smartphone or other smart device. See you then.